time to take a look at one of the biggest guns in the Space Marine arsenal. Hello and welcome back to Allspex Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel, where we're all about trying to get the most out of each unit on the tabletop. We've been gradually going through the various Space Marine options, and how things have changed after the new codex and supplements have come out, and today we're going to be looking at the Relic Fellblade. In this video we'll be taking a look at its datasheet, any obvious buffs, synergies and combos we can see, and how I would run one on the tabletop. In the background, the Fellblade was one of the signature tanks of the Space Marine's Great Crusade, and is based off an ancient STC construct that's very similar to the Astra Militarum Baneblade. The Fellblade is supposedly the more advanced of the two, with thicker armour and faster engines, making it the armoured support of choice for the Legions in the Great Crusade. Since the Legions were split up into their second founding chapters, the might of each Space Marine formation was heavily curtailed, so very few Fellblades have been made since the Horus Heresy. Those that do still exist in the armouries of the more venerable chapters are typically brought to the field of battle, when a truly apocalyptic enemy threat is faced, and only the heaviest guns can make an impact. So let's see what this venerable war machine can do on the tabletops of 8th edition. So the Relic Fellblade Super Heavy Tank is a Lord of War choice from Index Imperial Armour Forces of the Adeptus Astartes. It does have a very high points cost of 877 points for the cheapest variant. For this you get a Fellblade armed with a Fellblade Accelerator Cannon, two Laser Destroyers, a Demolisher Cannon, a Twin Heavy Bolter, and Crushing Tracks. It has a fearsome profile. It has movement 10 inches when on full profile, weapon skill of 5 up, so a bit better than your standard tank, Ballistic skill 3+, plus, strength 9, toughness 9, 26 wounds, 9 attacks, leadership 9, and a 2-up save. So if we are comparing it to the Baneblade, the 2-up armor save is very nice, as is toughness 9, meaning that even things like missile launchers will still need 5s to wound it. Despite these fearsome defenses though, point for point it isn't actually all that tough. For example, for 877 points, you could get 7 Vindicators. So 77 wounds worth of toughness 8 tank. The Fellblade only has 26, so despite being toughness 9 and having that nice 2-up armour, comparatively speaking, it's going to take less firepower to down one of these compared with its equivalent points in other armour. So what sort of firepower do you get for this princely investment? We'll start with the Fellblade Accelerator Cannon. It can fire either HE shells or AE shells for taking out light targets and armour respectively. The HE shells have a 100 inch range, so you're not going to outrange this thing. They're heavy 2d6, strength 8, AP minus 3, and damage 2. And if you're shooting it at a unit with 5 or more models, you can re-roll those 2d6 dice to see how many shots it shoots. Its AE shells are heavy 2, strength 14, AP minus 4, and damage 6. So very high damage, but very low shots. This thing is very similar in profile to the Repulse Executioner's Heavy Laser Destroyer, the former having just 2 shots and damage 6, the latter having 4 shots, but an average damage of 4. So if anything slightly weaker than the Repulse Executioner for its main gun on anti-tank mode, but it does have the option of firing what basically amounts to 2d6 overcharged plasma shots if you're trying to thin out some hordes or elite infantry. Its Demolisher Cannon is the standard issue one, and in the FAQs they have updated it to have heavy D6 shots, so it is a pretty fearsome weapon. Its sponsor weapons are laser destroyers, which are an interesting weapon. They've got 36 inch range, heavy 1, strength 12, AP minus 4, damage D6. And if you do cause a wounding hit, then you roll an additional dice. On a 3 to 5, you roll 2D6 for the damage, and on a 6, you roll 3D6 for the damage. Meaning that if these guys get a wound through, they could potentially one shot pretty much most vehicles if they roll very high. You can swap out those two sponsor mounted laser destroyers for quad las cannons, which will cost you 20 points each, putting your relic fell blade up to 917 points. I honestly think that this is probably worth it most of the time. The extra range is good, you're not really going to mind too much going from strength 12 to strength 9, and these things get 4 times the shots. It maths out that the quad las cannons are on average about twice as powerful as the heavy laser destroyers on average, so I would certainly take them. Aside from this option, you can also choose to take a pintle mounted weapon, either a heavy bolter, heavy flamer, multi melter or storm bolter. I'm most drawn to the heavy bolter or the storm bolter there for some decent increase in anti-infantry firepower. 
and you can take a twin heavy flamer on the hull instead of a twin heavy bolter. Personally, I never do this. It costs more and has very, very tiny range. That heavy bolter is pretty good, to be honest. In close combat, those crushing tracks are no slouch. They're strength 9, AP minus 2, and damage D3. However, they do only hit on 5s, meaning that this thing is nowhere near as strong as, say, a knight in close combat. Though, admittedly, a chapter master could make up some of the difference by giving it full re-rolls to hit in the fight phase. The Fellblade has a few interesting special rules. It has a mega explosion if you roll a 6 when it's destroyed, and every unit within 2d6 inches will suffer d6 mortal wounds. So if this thing does go bang, everyone's going to know about it. It has power of the machine spirit, which means that you can move and not suffer the penalty for moving and shooting its heavy weapons. So you will be able to get some decent mobility out of this, moving 10 inches per turn. It has smoke launchers, which you can activate instead of firing any of its weapons, which honestly is generally going to be a bad idea, as this thing is so expensive you need to be getting the value out of those guns every single turn. But I guess it's always an option if it has literally nothing to shoot at, and you know your opponent's going to be bringing in some heavy hitters next turn. Finally, it has the Steel Behemoth special rule, meaning that it can fall back from close combat and still shoot and charge, and it also has the option of shooting when it's in close combat, though the Demolisher Cannon and the Accelerator Cannon must target something that isn't the unit that's in close combat, but I believe that the rest of the weapons can target them. This means that close combat really isn't such a bad place for this thing to be, provided you're not too scared of the unit that you're in close combat with. So overall, this thing is an absolutely enormous, very points expensive, anti-tank firepower machine. If I assume that we're putting him near a chapter master for re-roll hits, it will do around about 30 odd wounds to toughness 7 vehicles when armed with the quad last cannons, and about 20 wounds to a knight with a 5 up inball save. So this thing really is kicking out some serious firepower each turn, though obviously it comes with a price tag. The Fellblade is going to need to be a linchpin unit that you buff with other units and base a large amount of your strategy around as it's so much a part of your army that you are going to be limited with what support elements you can bring for it. So let's see what buffs and synergies that we can do with this guy. First of all, we have the choice of what chapter to run it as. And as is often with vehicles, Iron Hands is a very good pick. Six up Feel No Pain will help with its durability, which isn't that high point for point. Reroll ones innately with all heavy weapons is good, so is better overwatch, and degrading slower. Fyros could help this thing with his signum array. The ironstone would be great for adding on defense, and the psychic powers and repair shenanigans certainly don't go amiss either. Imperial Fist could be another solid option. This thing is a dedicated tank and armor hunter, so having plus one damage against vehicles is great, so is ignoring cover, and Tor Garadon could be a good pal for this guy as you can give it 2 up to hit with his signum array, and also give it re-roll of 1s, so you're hitting quite accurately. Raven Guard or Stealthy certainly won't hurt on a unit with a 2 up save, as every point that you can increase that by is very helpful, as with no invulnerable save, high AP attacks could go through this thing quite quickly. Ultramarines have numerous solid buffing characters, in particular Tigerius making this minus 1 to hit could be helpful. Salamanders could be good particularly for their psychic powers, fire shield, to make it minus 1 to hit, and could perhaps even boost it to toughness 10 should they feel like it. Their plus 1 to wound stratagem is also a very helpful addition, particularly when it can apply to a unit that's so big and has so many guns. Finally, Black Templars could be a surprising dark horse choice for this tank, due to potentially being able to charge an enemy infantry squad and stop them falling back with the tenacious assault stratagem meaning that it could just keep them in combat while it happily plinks away at other enemy armour, completely safe from being shot itself. This guy will absolutely love a bit of character support. When you're applying a buff to a huge unit, you get more value out of it than elsewhere generally. Chapter Masters to give it 4 rerolls to hit will keep it accurate. Lieutenants for reroll wounds will also buff damage. And Chaplains, particularly with the plus 1 to hit litany, will have very good value here. I think a good choice is the Tech Marine with Master of Machines, who is the Master of the Forge from the new Faith and Fury book, as he could give it 2 up ballistic skill, and also pile on an extra 3 wounds in repairs each turn. Librarians and Psychic Powers could also be handy. You could use Might of Heroes on it to get it up to Toughness 10, though this isn't really all that big of an increase, but a lot of the Codex specific Psychic Powers could be pretty handy, particularly those from Iron Hands and Salamanders. Stratagems are also incredibly useful on this guy. 
because when you're affecting such a big unit, you're likely to be getting the absolutely maximal amount back from your invested command points. Any stratagem from the supplement books that either buffs its damage output or defense is of course usually going to be good value on him. Such a great big tank. From the main codex, Armour of Contempt could help you shrug off some mortal wounds. We've already mentioned making a captain a chapter master to give it four rerolls to hit, both in shooting and in close combat. But otherwise there aren't actually all that many stratagems that can be used on this guy. One thing that's worth thinking about though is to keep a command point spare for that explodes result. Because if this thing detonates in the middle of your army, then you have the potential to take quite a lot of mortal wounds if you can't re-roll the result. So how would I use this guy in a game of 40k then? I've already mentioned that my favourite build would be to take the quad last cannons on the sponsors, and I'd probably take the heavy bolter as the pintle mounted weapon. I'd absolutely certainly be taking some support characters to buff the accuracy of this guy, either a chapter master or a Master of Machines Tech Marine, to ensure all of those very expensive weapons are finding their shots on target. I think my favourite chaps to run him in would be Iron Hands, due to the 6 up Feel No Pain and the Iron Stone, which I'd absolutely certainly keep by him to make him a bit more durable to return firepower. If we can keep this guy alive for multiple turns, then he's definitely going to be clearing out pretty much all of the enemy armour, and that should go a long way towards winning us the game. You'd have to consider whether or not you're going to start this guy towards the front or the back of your army, as you need to balance up either using the demolisher cannon with keeping the tank safe from enemy reprisals. I think you'd have to judge this game to game, with some consideration to how important the relic fell blade would be to your strategy in that game. It's going to be absolutely key when you're fighting against a whole load of big heavy hitters or armour, but not the thing that you need to be focusing on. If you happen to be squaring off against 150 plague bearers or something like that, it's just not going to do all that much damage to the enemy, compared with the points that you've paid for it. If there is an easy way to deploy it in cover, and get a further bonus to your save, then obviously that's a good idea to do so, provided it's not going to hamper it too much in terms of mobility, and getting lines of sight where it needs them. I wouldn't underestimate the tank's close combat capabilities, or just the fact that it can inflict some damage in close combat, maybe disrupting the enemy formations, and if you do manage to trap any enemy units in combat with it, then it can just absolutely shoot away for the rest of the game, with no shooting reprisals, or until the enemy units it's in close combat with have died. I'd say the tank's main weakness is its relatively low durability. If this thing does get taken out before it's had enough chance to unload all of its firepower, then you could be in for a very rough game as this thing almost half your points in just one model before you've bought any support characters for it. If you are winning the game, then I think it will be worth starting to play a little bit more aggressively with this guy if you've been keeping him safe up to then. Don't forget to start him advancing towards the enemy. He's a lot more resilient to just randomly getting tagged in close combat by an infantry model, as it won't impede his shooting. And he could be a good bully unit for the later stages of the game to clear out some last troops hiding in cover. So how does this guy shape up against the competition? Within a Space Marines army, one of its biggest rivals is the Astrius, a tank that did get a very nice points drop in the recent chapter approved. The Astrius is now around 600 points, so it is significantly cheaper than this model. This thing does hit harder than the Astrius does, but it's pretty much equal in terms of the amount of firepower per point that you get. For example, two of these cost around the same as three Astriuses, and in a direct shooting contest, they do pretty much the exact same damage against Toughness 7 vehicles and Imperial Knights. However, the Astrius has a lot more wounds per point than this guy does, and while only Toughness 8 does have an invul save, which is a significant advantage. So I'd personally say in terms of firepower and durability per point comparison, I'd say the Astrius is probably a slight bit ahead if we're looking to absolutely optimise our armies. Though I do appreciate that that's not really always the case when you're looking at big centerpiece cool models like this. The other very similar super heavy tank is its sister tank, the Relic Falchion tank, which has pretty much the same stats, but instead packs a twin volcano cannon instead of the demolisher cannon and the main turret weapon. The Falchion costs a fair bit more, clocking in at over a thousand points, though for this you are rewarded with an absolutely devastating main gun, which is pretty much enough to put down any single threat in one shot with some crazy damage stats. It will do significantly more damage to one armoured target than the Fellblade will, as the stats on the main gun are just a fair bit more impressive. 
but of course it means that you have to invest yet more points in one model and if that model gets shot down then you're in a bit of a bad situation. So overall these guys are certainly fun centerpiece units that you can put a lot of solid buffs on but I probably wouldn't be running them in any sort of competitive type event just mainly due to the syndrome of having all of your eggs in one basket and compared with things that cost a lot less they're just not really quite as durable. Say when you compare them to Imperial Knights they can get a 4 up inball save quite easily. So anyway let me know your thoughts and ideas for getting the most out of this guy down in the comments below and feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics if you'd like to see more content like this. I have a Patreon page and if you're getting some good entertainment out of my videos please feel free to contribute to support the channel and thank you to all those who already are. Thanks very much for listening and I'll see you guys in the next video.